Welcome to the Air Gun Show. In this week's episode, I've got another pellet test, including the much talked about HN Barracuda 8. But before that, we're joining Rich Saunders as he deals with a serious infestation of rats. Now I'm down on my chicken farm permission once again. Winter has well and truly set in now. All the surrounding fields are flooded and the rats have really been flocking in uh, in search of cover and food and what have you. Now there's around about 8,000 chickens on the farm here and every 18 months or so the farmer changes half the flock. So the next stage is for a team of contractors armed with all kinds of heavy machinery to drag the shed back into the field. And as they do that, all the rats that have been living under the shed suddenly start panicking and run around trying to find somewhere to hide. Many of them will make their way back under the shed, but because the sides have been taken off, they'll be a lot easier to, to spot. And some will simply try and hide wherever they can find any cover, underneath bushes, farm equipment, that kind of thing. So the job for tonight is to hunt the rats down wherever they're hiding and shoot as many as I can before the shed is moved back again in a few days and the new flock of chickens put back in. Now before it gets dark, I'll just walk you through the gear that I'm using. The rifle is the relatively new FX Dynamic. Uh, I think Matt had one of these on the show a little while ago. Really nice compact rifle, it's a takedown so this bottle unscrews and it packs down into a case not much bigger than a, uh, a drill box to be perfectly honest. And it's nice and light as well. Um, 18 shot magazine and a side lever action and um, I'm sure that it will sound louder on the, on the footage because of the microphones and what have you. But in reality with a silencer on it's a really really quiet rifle. On top is a HIC Micro Cheetah, it's the laser rangefinder model. Um, digital day-night scope, so in, in daylight it's got a really clear colour image. At night you switch on the IR torch and you can shoot in, into dark as well. Um, as I said, the laser rangefinder function on it is really useful at night because it's that much harder to, to judge distances. And it's also nice and light too and I can also record footage through the, through the scope as well. Now, the, uh, the rats are gonna be spread all over the place. They're hiding underneath bushes and pallets and farm equipment, anywhere they can get some cover. So I'm gonna be moving around an awful lot tonight, I think. Now, I've put the rifle on a tripod, um, which fits really well, because you have this almost full-length arc rail. It's a little bit cumbersome to walk around, but the payoff is that I'll get a nice, secure platform to shoot from. I can see a few rats down, there's some laurel trees down the side there. So what I think I'm gonna do is, uh, oh, there's loads down there, is I'm gonna move down towards the laurels and then I'll wait my way, make my way around the back of the house, the, the chicken shed. Here we go. Well, I managed to get a couple there in the laurels. Um, I can't see any more down there, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make my way around the back of the shed and see if I can get one or two down there. The camera's probably picking up some sound from the fan, but hopefully you can still hear what's going on. So we can get another one.
I can see some more rats around the other side of the shed and there's a few more in the lulls again where I was just a few minutes ago so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to toggle between this position and round by the laurels. Just going to move around the other side now and see what we can get. Well, I'm standing now where the shed used to be and all the, all the muck's been cleared away. I'll tell you what, I'm glad I'm wearing wellies. I can see some rats inside the shed, the empty shed. I can see them underneath the shed as well. I've even seen some, left, some on the left, although I'd have to shoot through some chicken wire. And a few on the right as well. I think I'm, I'm surrounded here. Let's see how we get on. The rats have basically spent their entire life inside the chicken sheds and now the chicken shed has been moved, their world has been turned upside down. There's another one. There's a few more underneath the laurels now, come back out there. I think I'm going to have one more and call it a night. Right on cue, one that's just popped out. Well, I think that's enough for tonight. I've got loads of rats to pick up. There's, there's plenty more around here. So I think I'm probably going to come back for the next couple of nights and hopefully shoot some more. But until then, thanks very much for watching. A really hectic session on the rats for Rich there. Next up, I'm taking a look at three very different designs of air gun pellet.
We've got another pellet test this week, and this time it's the pellet that everybody seems to be talking about, the H&N Barracuda 8. However, to make things a bit more interesting, I'm also gonna be looking at pointed and hollow point 177 caliber pellets from the same stable, and I'm also gonna be looking at penetration as well as accuracy. So I've done my usual grouping tests over various ranges, and rather than use a mega high-end air gun, I've used my Wolther RM8, which is pretty accurate and not too pellet fussy. Um, of course, you could get significantly different results with your own air gun, so do take my findings only as a guide. Now I've got to say, as somebody who usually sticks to domed pellets, adding pointed on hollow points to the mix has been really interesting for me. Right, so first up we've got the H&N Barracuda 8, which I've already mentioned, and as I often do with these tests, I'm going to refer to my notes so I get all of the weights and measures correct. So, um, it's actually quite a well-priced pellet. UK distributor John Rothery Wholesale actually states a recommended retail price of £12.95 for a tin of 500 in 177 calibre. Now, its stated weight is 8.44 grains, and head size is 4.51 millimetres. Now they come in a screw top tin and they're just a very clean and consistent, quite conventional looking domed pellet. So as I said, I tested all of the pellets through my Wolther RM8 and I shot five shot groups at 20, 30 and 40 metres. Obviously I was shooting from the support of a bench and I was very fortunate to have dead calm conditions. So. In terms of how those Barracuda 8s actually performed through the RM8, uh, they gave a muzzle energy of 11.2 foot-pounds with a variation of 6 feet per second over a string of 10 shots. Now at 20 metres, the group was striking 6 millimetres high and measured 5 millimetres from centre to centre. At 30 metres, the group was dead on zero and measured just 6 millimetres from centre to centre. At 40 metres, the group had dropped 22 millimetres from that 30 metre zero, and it measured a tiny 11 millimetres from centre to centre. Now, as for penetration, I did a very unscientific test using a block of plasticine at 20 metres, and the wound channel with these pellets was 33 millimetres deep. Next up, we've got the pointed Spitzkugel. Now I've almost certainly pronounced that wrong, so do feel free to attack me in comments for that if it makes you feel better about yourself. Now this one has a recommended retail price of £14.95 for a tin of 500 in 177 calibre. Um, now the stated weight is 8.64 grains and head size is 4.5 millimetres. Now again, they come in a screw top tin and they're just a very clean, tidy pellet with a really distinctive point. So again, running through the RM8, the pointed round gave a muzzle energy of around 11.2 foot-pounds, but it was slightly less consistent with a variation of 11 feet per second over a 10 shot string. Uh, at 20 meters, the group was five millimeters high and measured six millimeters from center to center. At 30 meters, again, the group was on zero and it measured 15 millimeters from center to center. At 40 meters, the group had dropped about 24 millimeters from the 30 meter zero and had opened up to 21 millimeters from center to center. Now that is actually better than I had expected from a pointed pellet, but considering that that was the accuracy I was getting from a bench, I would say that with my setup, um, that's beyond this pellet's effective hunting range as far as I'm concerned. Now, penetration wise, the point didn't actually improve things as you would expect, and the wound channel um, only got to 30 millimeters before it stopped. So that is actually a bit less penetration than the Roundhead Barracuda 8. Right, finally, we've got the Barracuda Hunter Extreme. Now this one has a recommended retail price of $12.95 for 400 in 177, and it's a slightly heavier 177 at 9.57 grains, 
and its head size is stated as 4.5 millimeters. Now, once again, they come in a screw top tin and look very, very tidy. And so the interesting thing with these pellets is that obviously it's a hollow point round, but it's got quartered sections which have actually appear to have been divided. Now, it strikes me that that's been done to actually help it to expand and open up. And as you can imagine, I was very interested to find out if and how that actually happened. So how did the Barracuda Hunter Extreme actually perform? Well, it pushed muzzle energy up a little to 11.4 foot-pounds, and it was pretty consistent with a variation uh, within seven feet per second over a 10-shot string. Now at 20 meters, the group was striking seven millimeters high from the 30 meter zero, and it measured six millimeters from center to center. At 30 meters, the group again was on zero and measured 14 millimeters from center to center. Now at 40 meters, the five shot group had dropped by about 29 millimeters from that 30 meter zero and it measured 24 millimeters from center to center. And as with the, the pointed Spitzkugel, with my setup, 40 meters just seemed to be pushing it a little bit far with this round. Now, the penetration of this pellet was actually really interesting because despite it being a hollow point, the Hunter Extreme actually went the deepest of all, traveling 34 millimeters at 20 meters. Now, that is presumably because it's a slightly heavier pellet and it's carrying more momentum. So what do I think these results actually tell us? Well, firstly, that the H&N Barracuda 8 is a very accurate pellet through my Wilder Rotex RM8. It is in fact some of the best results that I've ever had through it. Uh, the targets that I've used as examples here are all fairly average, so they do give a fair representation of how these pellets perform. Um, now, also, its 33 millimeter wound channel was pretty average in this test, and the retrieved pellet was somewhat shortened and a little bit wider, so that suggests that it did deliver a fair amount of shock energy. Now, I wasn't really expecting the pointed or hollow point pellets to do brilliantly over the longer ranges, and they actually did better than I expected just to deliver measurable groups at 40 meters. I've certainly seen much worse from other brands with similar designs. Um, again, sometimes it's just down to the gun that you're running them through and it's just not a good pellet match. Um, like the Barracuda 8, the Spitzkugel was also shortened and widened slightly by the impact, um, but the retrieved Hunter Extreme was certainly the, the most interesting one. Uh, to be honest, I don't usually expect hollow point pellets to deform noticeably when you're running them through a sub 12 foot pound air gun. But not only did this one penetrate deepest, it also expanded the most and actually quite considerably and certainly more than I'd expected. Now, Bearing in mind that there was no bone to deform it in my test, it could be a really destructive pellet for close to mid-range pest control. As I always say, different air guns can shoot very differently with different pellets. Now, my test hasn't been particularly scientific. I've done my best, but the only way to really find out what works with your gun is to go out and experiment for yourself. So do take my findings only as a guide. What I will say though is that I have tried the Barracuda 8 through a couple of other guns and it's given very impressive results with them too. So it strikes me as being a really good pellet at a very sensible price.
I'm afraid that's all we've got time for in this week's episode, but as ever, I'll be back with much more in two weeks' time. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to like and subscribe. And also, do take a look at the subscription office that we have for Airgun World magazine. You should be able to find a link to that in the show description. Also, if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits that you could be taking advantage of through Airgun membership. So, I'll be back again in a fortnight. In the meantime, enjoy your shooting and stay safe. If you aren't a member of BASC, it's time to join now. BASC, looking after your sport, looking after you.